Ensuring excellence in the post-purchase experience is the topic of my conversation today with Joe Markerell. He is Vice President and Assistant General Manager of Inmar Post-Purchase Solutions. Hi, Joe. Hi, Bob. Thank you so much for being with me. So, Joe, how can online merchants use the post-purchase experience to to differentiate their brands in a crowded marketplace? Yeah, Bob, it's a great path question, something I'm really passionate about. Uh, The great thing about the internet and online is that there's kind of ubiquity everywhere. Everyone's on a bit of a level playing field, at least for searchability and finding product. But it's really that experience that matters and specifically the post-purchase experience that helps consumers keep coming back and back to the brand. Uh, And not to get too technical, but something I've used, you know, throughout my career is called the Kano model. Uh, And really what it does is it talks through something that's on a matrix and on the X axis, you have sort of features or services and on the Y axis, you have satisfaction. And so really it breaks it down into sort of three quadrants that are extreme delighters, sort of meeting the needs and must haves. And I think, you know, what happens over time is these things shift down. So things that were once, you know, extreme delighters and new and exciting features become something you just expect. And the things that you just expect now become, you've got to have it, got to have table stakes. And we're really seeing that with online purchases now. You know, if I just think specifically to returns, you know, I need to have a way to return an item, right? But now my expectation as a consumer is I need to have a digital way to do that. I should be able to do that online. I should be able to do that very easily. I should be able to print a label at home uh, and get my package back to where it needs to go and get statuses on my refund. And then if I think about the extreme example, the people that are doing you know great things, it's package-free, label-free returns. It's letting me keep my return because they know I'm a trusted consumer. Uh, It's helping me find ways to keep my product because I bought it and it's not that I didn't want it. It's just that I don't know how to use it, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's all these ways for retailers and brands to connect with consumers after they've made their purchase, to inform them about delivery, to keep in touch with them about how to use the product, to keep informed about ways to return their product if they're having an issue and making that really simple and easy for for consumers. Yeah, but returns are such a huge cost center for retailers to the point where some retailers are almost wanting to dis- to create a disincentive by make- making it harder. You know, you, you, you talked about, you know, having the envelope, having the pre-printed label. That sounds great for the consumer side, but it almost encourages the consumer to engage in more returns, thereby putting more costs on the provider of the service. So I guess what we're talking about here, ways to optimize that customer experience can help to bring down the price, help and make it more efficient from the delivery standpoint. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's a fair point. And so what happens, I think, for retailers, they see returns as just this big cost center, right? Yeah. Uh, And it's one way to think about it for sure. But in reality, um, the consumer is not going into a purchase wanting to return an item unless they're a fraudulent actor and there's tools and mechanism way to identify them and hopefully mitigate that behavior. But the reality is, is, you know, (laughs) Amazon sort of set the standard of how this is going to be and a consumer can just as easily go to Amazon.com versus, you know, Retailer.com uh, and search for their product because they know they're going to get that confidence, convenience, and meet their expectations of how to return a, an item easily. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so what I think it's it's not the retailer needs to go in a way to not sort of look at it as a way to mitigate the cost, but as a way to engage that consumer take the data throughout the process about why they're returning an item. Do they have issues with sizing charts online? Do they have issues with product descriptions? Is it just a bad product and they need to eliminate it from their SKU assortment? And there's ways to, over time, take the learnings you have about that return, mitigate that cost, and then use that data and experience to then engage that consumer future-wise to keep mm-hmm. that long-term value and not look at it as a one-to-one transaction. Sure. So not a cost burden, but an actual opportunity. You mentioned data. Tell me about the importance of sharing data across the post-purchase journey and how we how far we've come in, in achieving that goal. Yeah, it's a critical point. I think what happened during the pandemic is there was a lot of focus on the forward side of the supply chain network. How do I collect data about my product stuck out in the port in Los Angeles and I have no idea when it's going to get into my distribution center and then out to my stores or out to my consumers. And so there's tools and technologies and there was a lot of emphasis put on stitching all that together. But as what would happen for, you know, 
forever and since the dawn of time, returns is always a laggard of like, when do I think about it? How do I think about it? And so there's still ways of which we can improve as an industry, but the key is to stitch that data across the whole journey. So understand why consumers are telling you they're returning an item. What's their method and preferred method for dropping that item off? What's the recovery value of that item once you get it? How quickly can you get credit back to that consumer? How long does that customer stay with you because of a good or poor returns experience? Mm -hmm. And then starting to stitch all that together in a way to help you better inform your decisions. Yeah. And at the base of all this, as you're suggesting today, visibility. Visibility of information so the customer, not only in the forward delivery, we all like to see exactly where our package is every minute as it comes toward us. Visibility on the return side, too, like just as important, yeah. right? And in some cases, more important, right? Because I paid for something and then I'm expecting it to get delivered. And so, yes, I want that to be there. And maybe it's for a, an important engagement or, you know, some activity that I need that on time delivered to me. But then in the return, I've no longer wanted this item. I've returned it to you. And I expect my refund, you know, very quickly. And our data would show that consumers really anticipate and expect that refund to happen almost yeah. instantaneously. So you're talking about how retailers can react very quickly to customer needs, but there's also this concept of proactive customer service. What does that mean to you? Yeah. So, you know, I think when I think post-purchase again, it's really on that full life cycle after I've clicked buy. And so on the outbound side, it's really keeping the consumer informed about the delivery. So if they're having issues with getting an item fulfilled, or it's going to be delayed because of weather events, um, they're getting the customer ahead of that mm -hmm. and using the data and intelligence to inform the customer that, hey, we're expecting a delay and potentially giving them some remediation. And on the return side, it's using data to understand that customer, understand the cost of a product uh, and the optionality you have where maybe I just refund the customer before they even drop it off at a carrier, or maybe I tell them to keep it. Uh, or maybe I have to wait because it's a really high dollar item and I'm not really that trusting of this consumer and I've got to actually inspect the item. But it's really leveraging data to drive your decisions about sort of what technology you're going to put in place, how you're going to communicate with the customer and what actions you're going to take with that customer. But the pressure on the deliverer, on the retailer never stops because as you point out yourself, Joe, what might be a delightful thing that gives a company a competitive advantage Later on, turns into table stakes. That's exactly it's like, ho, right. ho hum, of course you're giving us that. No big deal. What, what, mm -hmm. what have you done for us lately? So <laughs> this just goes on and on, right? It does. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Joe, for uh, kind of painting this picture of, for us of the proactive post-purchase experience for customers and how, they, uh, how, how retailers are answering the call to provide that kind of service excellence. I do want to take a moment, though, to ask you about Inmar post-purchase solutions and how you guys are addressing the needs of shoppers, merchants, and carriers today. Yeah, I appreciate that. And so Inmar has been around for 30 plus years in the return space, and we've been an expert in, you know, physical handling and processing of returns, and keeping 99% of items that we get out of landfill, helping on the secondary market, getting items back into stock, and really, as we talked about, sort of reducing the overall cost of a return. Uh, and then recently, we announced a joint venture with Doddle, who's a UK-based company, but is a global leader in pickup and drop-off technology. Uh, and really what we've tried to do is couple the expertise of the digital and physical uh, into Inmar post-purchase solutions, which is allowing brands and retailers, you know, new, exciting, convenient options for consumers when they return an item, when they get an item delivered, uh, and how they want to do that, as well as, you know, mitigating the overall cost of a return uh, through the Inmar experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we talked about things shifting from delighters to table stakes, you know, <laughs> We did a survey a couple of years ago, 72% of consumers said a single bad returns experience would you know, stop them from shopping with a brand again. We did that survey again recently and that number jumped to 83%. So, wow. you know, so showing, you know, in a matter of a few years, expectations for consumers about what an experience looks like is really driving uh, their decisions with their wallet. Joe Marcarell of Inmar Post-Purchase Solutions, thanks so much for talking to us today about how the post-purchase experience can achieve competitive advantage for brands in a very crowded marketplace. Uh, thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Bob.